Richard Rogers wrote a song, A Girl Enjoys Being a Girl, but with wives, it's different. A wife enjoys being a nag. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, my wife, Kathy, she couldn't wait. Couldn't wait till after the wedding ceremony. Right during the ceremony, she had to start nagging. When I said, I do, she said, oh, you do, do you? <laughs> And when we arrived at our home, our very first home, I picked her up to carry her across the threshold. She said, wipe your feet first. <laughs> but I'll say one thing for my wife. She's very, very philanthropic. Charitable girl. She keeps at least 100 department stores alive. <laughs> I tell her if she doesn't show up one day at Macy's, they send her a get well card. <laughs> but I gotta admit, she's a real bargain hunter. Yes, she is a bargain hunter. She always says to me, now, darling, don't think about what I spend. Think about what I save. <laughs> From her savings alone, I could wind up in the poorhouse. <laughs> and she's got an answer for everything, my bride. Like one day I came home, and there's our new car right in the middle of the dining room. <laughs> I said, honey, how in the world did you ever get the car in the dining room? She said, oh, easy. I made a left turn in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my bride who said that. Oh, but I love her. <laughs> well, no, when we were first married, she was without question the most beautiful bride in New York and the worst cook in the world. <laughs> no, I mean that you heard about the woman who was such a bad cook, she burned water. My wife burned the stove. <laughs> what a bad cook. One day she came to me, she said, honey, how do you fix frankfurters? I said, how do I know? I, uh, I guess maybe the same way you fix fish. She said, oh, don't be silly, I tried that. <laughs> she said, once you clean out those weenies, there's nothing left. I'm lying. Look like somebody been dispossessed. <laughs> Well, from the looks of things, today he's just a friend of the family. <laughs> it's Daddy! What's that? What do you want, honey? Ma, what's everybody doing in my bedroom? You're not in your bedroom. <laughs> Why are you sleeping on the couch, Daddy? Well, ma Mother thinks she might be coming down with a cold, dear. <laughs> She, she's not sure. She just thinks maybe she might be coming down and thought it'd be safer if I'd sleep out here so I wouldn't catch her cold just in case she's gonna catch it if she's gonna catch it. Daddy's in the doghouse, isn't he? No, Daddy's not in the doghouse, isn't he? No, your daddy isn't in the doghouse. Why, he's a lord and master of this house. Nobody could put him in the doghouse. You can say that again. What do you like for your breakfast, gravy train? <laughs> now you cut that out. Oh, Miss Williams, hello. How are you? Good morning, Mom. Good morning, everybody. That is almost everybody. <laughs> now look you. Oh. <laughs> look, why don't you take the kid in and make her breakfast, huh? Yeah, come along, Linda. Breakfast, Louise. Growing children can't have too many breakfasts. Now you come on. Oh, gee, I want to watch the fireworks. You can wait for the fireworks till the 4th of July. Come on, kid. <laughs> okay, wise guy. What's the big joke? What's the idea of locking the bedroom door last night? Oh, did I do that? I must have done it absent mindedly. How thoughtless of me. I don't know. You must have given it some thought when you yelled, stay out, you rat. <laughs> After what you did to me last night, rat is a compliment. What'd I do to you? What'd I do to you? I was never so humiliated in my life. Humiliated? What for? What for? Do you think I enjoy being the butt of your so-called jokes? You mean that's what you're... Ah, oh, honey. Don't you honey me. <laughs> but crying out loud just because I told a couple of jokes there's no reason to declare my bedroom off limits. <laughs> I wasn't talking about you anyway. I was talking about wives in general. Talking about your wife, Kathy, doesn't sound very general to me. Look. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on, Clancy. Cool off. 
You... Look, I don't get your sensitivity. I mean, all of a sudden, I, I've been doing wife jokes for years. Well, you might as well know. It has never been one of my favorite topics. If I actually did and said all those things you make jokes about, it would be bad enough, but I don't. It just so happens I'm not that stupid. Of course you're not, sweetheart. <laughs> Honey, I'm a comedian. I make people laugh. Now, what is comedy? Burlesque, making fun of the original, right? I mean, exaggerating reality, getting people I to identify... I am in no them. mood for a lecture on comedy. And I still don't think our personal life should become a part of your act. Every comic gets his act from personal life. Things that happen to him with his wife, with his kids. It has universal appeal because it happens to everybody. Well, aren't there nice things that happen in our personal life? Nice things I do that you could talk about? Nice things? <laughs> you want me to get laughs with nice things? Oh, great, I'll be a smash. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you about my nice wife. Oh, boy, when she makes a bed, it's neat. <laughs> Some laughs I'm gonna get with that. People are gonna say, oh boy, let's hurry back and catch that performance. It's great. Nancy, this is silly. What are we fighting about? I forgive you. Give me a kiss. I still don't like the idea of people thinking of me as a character. Nobody thinks of you as a character, Irish. Now, they know I make up all that stuff. Really, they do. Well, I'm not so sure. People are very gullible, you oh, know. Oh, honey, when I talk about you, they don't think of you as you. They know that I'm talking about wives in general. Well... That's my good. Just the same, honey, I don't think that you should talk about Sweetheart, me that way. Sweetheart, you're making a big thing out of nothing. You've been married to a comedian for years. You ought to know this racket by now. Well, I suppose. Oh, That's so, my girl. No, I think that there are other ways of telling those kind Kathy, of stories. Kathy, I'm surprised at you. I had no idea you would take it this way. Not you. Well, oh, sweet. just the same, honey. There must Kathy, be. now this thing is silly. I don't know why you're taking it personally in the first place. Well, maybe I do take it too personally. I don't know, but I just don't sure. like people to think that you don't love me, and all I we do is fight you. all the time. I got written, I love you all over my face. I love you with all my heart, and keep your hands down. <laughs> this is what I needed now, a phone call. <laughs> Hello. Who? Put him on. Howard Blake, the guy does interviews on television. <laughs> but he wants me for his show. His rating must be slipping. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Howie. Yeah, how are you? Fine. Look, I'll save you a lot of time. If you want me on your show, you got me on your show. You don't want me on your show. <laughs> well, to what do I owe the honor of this call? My wife? Oh, just a minute. Blake wants to talk to you. Are you in? Me? Well, what does he want to talk to me about? I don't know. The answer's on the other end of this wire. No way. How do I know? Hello, Mr. Blake? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, is that so? Oh, you really think so, hmm? I see. Uh-huh. Is that really what they're saying? Well, that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yes, indeed, I would be very glad to. I certainly would. <laughs> and thank you very much, Mr. Blake. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> when you make jokes about me, people don't think of me as me. Hmm? Hmm? They just think about wives in general. What are you talking about? Well, Howard Blake doesn't think so. Huh? No, he's asked me to go on his television show tomorrow. He has? And you know why? Why? Because since I've become the butt of your jokes, people think of me as a character, and he thinks that they'll be interested in seeing me. Huh? In other words, he thinks I'm a goat! <laughs> oh, Clancy. Honey, 
Oh, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard in my whole life. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll call him up right now and, and tell him you're not going on. Don't worry about don't it. Don't you dare touch that telephone. Oh, no, you, Danny, don't you touch that telephone. Give me that phone. I will not. Give me I that phone. I will Kathy not. Kathy Williams, get off of that phone. <laughs> You mean to tell me you're honestly gonna go on that show? I certainly am. What for? What are you gonna do? I think it's a perfect chance for wives to get equal time. <laughs> you mean you're gonna go on a show and talk about your husband? Oh, no, dear. I'm just going to talk about husbands in general. A certain loudmouth Lebanese husband in general. <laughs> now you're being childish. Absolutely childish. Now, you're not a child, you're my wife. And I'm your husband. Your lord and master, and listen to me, and listen to me real good. I forbid you to go on that show! <laughs> Kathy, please don't go on the show. Danny, have, have, you, have you tried reasoning with it? I've tried just about everything. I'll bet there's one thing you haven't tried. What? The best of all. What? The simple, honest approach. What? Bribery. <laughs> That's all right. What kind of a suggestion is that? Is that any basis for a marriage? I mean, after all these years of love and devotion and understanding, a man has got to buy his wife's loyalty with a bribe? I tried it and it didn't work. <laughs> Danny. Wait a minute. What is all the panic about? Uh, I mean, let us review the situation. Yeah, let us. Your wife is going to be interviewed on a television show. What is she going to say about you? Plenty. <laughs> Come on, Danny. We're talking about Kathy. Your wife, Kathy, not Milton Burrow with the ad libs. Huh? I mean, how sharp can she be with the wise cracks? Hey. Cello? Yeah. You got something there. You're so right. Mm. When that red light goes on that TV camera, she will freeze up like a clam. <laughs> uh, she won't be able to open her mouth. She'll be so nervous she won't know what to say. <laughs> After all, it, it's not like she's got a rider or anything. <laughs> oh, buddy, you're a wonderful rider. You have a lot of material there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Fine, fine. Don't worry, it's gonna be great. Oh, buddy, now you've got to promise me that you'll rehearse me and how to read these lines. Honey, I will rehearse you so good you get out there you will murder the people. Oh, I just want to murder Danny. <laughs> well, look who's here, the Lebanese Ed Sullivan. <laughs> what are you doing here? What do you mean, what is he doing here? He lives here. <laughs> well, speaking of what's he doing here, what's he doing here? Well, um, uh, uh, uh... Buddy, I'm talking to you. What are you doing here? Huh? Oh, oh don't bother me. I'm busy. I'm writing. <laughs> I don't remember giving you any assignment to write for me. I'm not writing for you. I'm writing for her. For her? What for? Well, for one thing, she's prettier than you are. <laughs> He's writing some material for my appearance on the Howard Blake Show. Yeah. yeah. For the... Ho you realize she's going on that show to knock me? I know. You know? Yeah. And you're still going to do it? Sure, and you know something? You make a pretty good subject. Uh, my husband is so egotistical, he even got a mirror on the ceiling in his bathroom so he can watch himself gargle. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that yeah, funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you know something? You are another Benedict Arnold. Who's he right for? Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, and your corny jokes. Oh, Kathy, I'm surprised that you'd pull a trick like this, getting my own writer to work against me. Now, wait a minute, Danny. Don't be so quick to accuse Kathy. Buddy, this is a pretty sneaky, low-down trick. And it takes a certain fiendish, diabolical mind to come up with a thing like that. All right, Bunny, why'd you do it? <laughs> because this is war, that's why. And you don't go to war without ammunition. Yeah, you know how you lose a war? By having your supply line cut off. <laughs> and I can have your supply line cut off like that. Oh, you think so, do you? I know so. Hey, Two-Face. <laughs> I'm Two-Face? Yeah, and I don't like either one. <laughs> Kindly recall you have an exclusive contract to write for me, therefore you cannot write for her. Yeah, I got an exclusive contract to write for you, 
but for nightclubs. Yep. She's going on television, and you don't have an exclusive contract for me to write for you for that. We don't have him for television? How come? You said he wasn't good enough for TV. <laughs> I said that verbatim. Three years of grammar school, and he speaks Latin. <laughs> He's wonderful for TV. Yeah, and I'm doing a pretty good job writing for that Alan Brady show. I'm glad you brought that up, because I think that's the only job you got right now. You won't be writing for me anymore. Oh, swell, Danny. Oh, wonderful. Just uh, go, go ahead, throw your weight around. Yeah, two day, two day, you there. Picking on nice people, P poor defenseless writers, underlings. Do you know what you are, Danny? You are just plain mean. <laughs> Charlie? I am leaving. Da Danny? Danny, you are a mean man! Charlie! I'm, I'm married to her, not you. <laughs> you get out of here, You know too. something? You're right. You're mean. Never mind. Get Boy, out you are mean. Hey, we didn't do any mean jokes. Never mind. Well, how about, how about my, my husband is so mean, he once stuck a knife in a guy's back and then had him arrested for carrying concealed weapons. All right! <laughs> He's so mean he once followed a Boy Scout and kept on tying his knots. You know? <laughs> Wait a minute. Or he's oh, shut up! up. <laughs> My husband is so dumb. My husband is so dumb, he thinks the best way to catch a rabbit is to hide in the grass and make a noise like a carrot. <laughs> You're gonna say that about me? I don't even know what a carrot sounds like! <laughs> Kathy, you... You can't say these things about me, they're not true! Oh, darling, of course not. But you remember about comedy? You have to exaggerate to be funny. It's what uh, we in the business call comedic license. We in the... Now, look, Kathy, I know, I know you're sort, mean, you want to get even, but you're getting carried away with all this. You're just not thinking, little girl. Do you realize you go on television and, and knock your husband, make fun of him in front of all those people? You're gonna make me the laughing stock of the whole country? Oh, darling, don't be silly. They won't think of you as you. They'll just think that I'm talking about husbands in general. <laughs> you're, you're really gonna go through with this, huh? I certainly am. Okay. Go ahead. Go on, have your big moment. Go on television and, and make fun of me. But just remember, when you're up there knocking me, you're knocking a guy who loves you with all of his heart. A guy whose only thought is what's best for you. Your husband. The man that you promised to love and, and who you took for better or for worse in, in sickness and in health. Until death do us part. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. You are? Yes, I, I'm sorry. But he didn't do more jokes about what a bad actor you are. <laughs> I'm a bad actor? Hey, bad actor! Oh, get out of here! My husband is such a bad actor, he once played Cleopatra, even the snake wouldn't bite him. Get out of here! <laughs> Charlie, get away from the set, don't turn it on. Danny, will you stop it? Just because you're not gonna watch it, don't mean it'll go away. <laughs> Now, come on, watch. Take your medicine like a man, and I suggest you fasten your seatbelt so it looks like we're for a rough trip. <laughs> That's all I need is jokes from you. I'm gonna get hit by thousands of them in a second. Good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful having you with us, and it's wonderful having our guest. So without further ado, here she is, the wife of that popular comedian, Danny Williams. Mrs. Williams, it's a pleasure having you with us today. Well, I just couldn't wait to get on your show, Mr. Blake. Well, I'll thank you. Now, I'm here to talk about my husband. We're going to, Mrs. Williams, we're going to. Folks, I don't know how many of you have caught Danny's act at the Copa Club in New York, but he has a routine about his wife that is hilarious. And the jokes that they do about Mrs. Williams here have been appearing in the columns lately. So, you are a personality of your own. Yes, so it seems. All right, Mrs. Williams, let's talk about you. 
Oh, really, I'm not important. I'm here to talk about my husband. Now, my husband, when he gets up in the morning, is without oh, wait, a just doubt... Just a minute, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Williams. I can't go along with you about being unimportant because, in my opinion, he is the luckiest man in show business, having you as his wife. You see, you are a wonderful source of material for him. All those things you do and say, they're wonderful. Oh, well, you don't really believe that I do and say all those things. But you should hear my husband, especially when he gets up in the morning. He was, without a doubt... Now, there's no the... reason to be modest, Mrs. Williams. Now, look, I think you deserve a lot of credit. You have a sense of humor, and this is a rare gift. She well, has certainly paid off for your husband. Well, I'm really not that funny, but my husband... Now, if you would just see him in the morning, when he gets up in the morning, he uh, is without... We know, I know that we know that some of the things he says about you are just a little exaggerated. I'll go along with that. But overall, I am sure that you are the inspiration for all the wonderful, warm humor that Danny has known so well for. I am? Oh, I assure you, Mrs. Williams, I mean it. You see, we in the business envy your husband very much because he has a wife that's not only beautiful but a helpmate in his work me yes you mrs Whitney. <laughs> so often people the wives of people in the spotlight are just simple average homebodies but you you are a personality that sparkles you just bubble with wit i do <laughs> mrs williams you are wonderful. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Do you mind if I uh, ask you just one little question? Oh, no, you can ask me anything you wish. <laughs> you know, when uh, Danny makes you the butt of his jokes, don't you resent it just a little bit? <laughs> oh, good heavens, no. <laughs> You know, my husband really does have a great talent for taking some ordinary little thing that I might do any day and making it sound funny and unusual. Well, like, for instance, the time I lost the car keys in the tuna fish salad. You don't see anything unusual about losing car keys in tuna fish salad? Oh, certainly not. Now, when Danny came looking for the car keys and couldn't find them, he blew his top and he said, how do you expect me to drive the car without any keys? And I told him, darling, don't worry. I always keep an extra set of keys around the house somewhere. And you know where we found them? We found them in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> mashed potatoes? Yes. Well, now, Danny took that very simple, ordinary little situation, and he made it sound like something ridiculous. <laughs> We will talk to our next guest following this message. Well, Danny boy, I got a message for you. Huh? You are married to a kook. But isn't she an adorable kook? <laughs> Well, this is even funnier than yesterday. It is hysterical. I know you're going to want to use this one in your act. Oh, Kathy, not again. Oh, honey, listen. On the way home today, I, at 59th and Madison, I went right through a red light. Oh, that's a riot. <laughs> honey, that's not the punchline. Oh? No. An officer stopped me, and he said, show me your driver's license. Well, I looked all through my purse, and I didn't have my driver's license. So you know what I said, darling? <laughs> I said... <laughs> Officer, with all these credit cards, do I have room for a driver's license? <laughs> Aren't you going to write it down? Uh, I'll remember it, honey. <laughs> Darling, you might not. You better write it down now. Kathy, why don't you stop punching with the routines and the jokes, sweetheart? Well, I'm just trying to help you with your work. You really want to be my helpmate. Mm -hmm. Would you really like to collaborate with me? Oh, yes. Well, let me show you how. Mm, 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 What's mm. the matter? I just thought of one. Oh, for crying <laughs> 